The perfect and the absolute praise is due to Allah who created the heavens and the earth and made the darkness and the light. Then those who reject faith hold others as equal with their Lord. I testify with open and sound testimony, with no hesitation or embarrassment, that there is nothing worthy, worthy of worship except Allah. In His hands is the control of each and everything, and to Him is the return. I further testify with open and sound testimony, without any shame, hesitation, or embarrassment, I witness that our leader, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is the messenger of Allah, with whom Allah sealed the prophethood and sent down on him the Quran with structure for mankind and a guide and a mercy to the people who are sure. O oh Allah, send prayers and peace upon our leader Muhammad and his family and his companions and those whom followed him in goodness and righteousness until the day they are raised. And what follows thereafter, O oh servants of Allah, I advise you as well as I advise myself to first have taqwa, proper regard for Allah Most High, and then obey him. Obey Allah, obey his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then obey, then obey the righteous nature of yourself. Because the righteous nature of yourself will speak to you. <coughs> if you listen, if you obey Allah and his messenger, the righteous nature of yourself will speak to you. I give thanks and praise to Allah for affording me this opportunity to come before the servants of Allah. For me, that is not a light responsibility because I, we, will be held accountable for everything that we think and everything that comes off of our tongue. So we must prepare ourselves for that. This is the holiest day in Al-Islam, Salat al Juma, holier than both Eids. These are the three holy days that Allah gives us. And this is the holiest of them all, Juma, once a week, all right, a chance for us to refuel ourselves each week and prepare for the next week. So inshallah, we will find it in ourselves, we will find it amongst ourselves with each other that we benefit from ourselves and that we benefit from each other. Ummah. That we benefit from each other. And if we do not benefit from each other because of our sins and shortcomings, then we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us our sins and our shortcomings and give us understanding of the Quran. Because it is the Quran that will direct your understanding. If you sincerely want the Quran, you do not have to go and try to find it. The Quran will come to you. The Quran will come to you. The Quran is not a book for the shelf. The Quran is not a book to be picked up during Ramadan. The Quran is not a book to be looked at as a book as we know a book. The Quran is living. The Quran is a living organism. It exists in creation. Or I should say creation exists from the Quran. You exist from the Quran. So that says to us that Allah has placed Quran within you. 
Your very nature is based upon the the living, moving Quran that moves your very soul. We just have to recognize it, accept it, recognize it, and act upon it. Insha'Allah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Fabima rahmatim minnallahi lintalahum. Walau kunta fadhan galithal kalbi. Lan faddu. Lan faddu. Min haulika fa'fu anhum. Wastakfir lahum. Wa shawirhum fil amri. Fa idha azamta fatawakkal allallahi. In allaha yuhibbul mutawakkilin. Sadaqallahu adheem. And surely the Almighty has spoken the truth. Alhamdulillah. One um, translation of this uh, by um, Muhammad Assad. Muhammad Assad, a well-known grammarian. He translates, and it was by Allah's grace that thou didst did not deal, did deal gently with thy followers. For if thou had been harsh and hard of heart, they would indeed have broken away from you. Pardon them then and pray they be forgiven. And take counsel with them in all matters of public concern. Then when thou have decided upon a course of action, place thy trust in Allah. For verily Allah loves those who place their trust in Him. He, he goes on with some notes on this and he says, when it says with them, uh, with those of his followers, and he makes note of this occasion, who failed in their duty before and during the disaster of Uhud. According to all, as he says, all available accounts, the Prophet did not even reproach any of them for what they had done. When they did not fulfill their duties at the Battle of Uhud, now, I'm not going to go into the story of Uhud. We should know that. He did not become angry at them. He did not treat them harshly. He didn't even approach them about the wrong they had done. This injunction implying, and we'll use terms here, that may uh, bring the wrong type of thoughts to mind because of our experiences with government. But government does not mean that the government that we experience, whether bad or good, is government that is established by man. Because the Prophet ﷺ established government to govern. To govern. The Quran commands the establishment of government. Not as we understand it. It's different terms used in the Quran. But when we look at it in the language that we understand, we can use that term government. One famous person of these United States of America said, do not, do not ask what the government can do for you. Ask what, the, what you can do for the government. We can't sit back and expect things to change.
but asking the government to do something for us. Ask what we can do for the government by way of by way of commanding what is right and forbidding that which is wrong. Not in our not in our lip service, but in our action. <clears throat> Implying government by consent and counsel must be regarded as one of the fundamental clauses of all Quranic legislation relating to statecraft. The pronoun them relates to the believers, that is, to the whole community, while the word al-amr, occurring in this context, as well as in much earlier revealed phrases, denotes all affairs of public concern, including state administration. All authorities agree that the above ordinance, and I'm still reading Muhammad Assad, just a little bit of elaboration on this. It's not my elaboration, it's his. I'm just giving some other. All authorities agree that the above ordinance, although addressed in the first instance to the Prophet, is binding, is binding to all Muslims at, all, at, at and for all times. Amr, shura baynahum, the shura. Some Muslim scholars conclude from the wording of this ordinance that the leader of the community, although obliged to take counsel, the wording of this ordinance that the leader of the community, although obliged to take counsel, is nevertheless free to accept or reject it. But the arbitrariness of this conclusion becomes obvious as soon as we recall that even the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, considered himself bound by the decisions of the council of the Shura. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, took it to be for himself bound by the Shura. He had the he had the authority to accept it or reject it, but he felt that he himself, the messenger of Allah, bound by the shura of the believers. Moreover, when he was asked, according to the tradition on the authority of Ali ibn Abi Talib, to explain the implications of the word uh, Adam, deciding upon a course of action, which occurs in the above verse, the prophet replied, it means taking counsel with knowledgeable people and thereupon following them therein. Alhamdulillah. Brothers and sisters of this honorable Ummah. And I say honorable because Allah says, Kum kum kaira ummatin ukri nas. You are the best people, community, brought out for the benefit of mankind. That's why we are honorable. That's why we can hold the title honorable if we follow, as we said in the beginning, if we obey the Quran, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, obey Allah, the Quran, the Messenger of Allah, and obey the nature, the good nature of your own self. Because Allah says, Kum tum kairaun matin ukrijat. You are the best people community brought out, commanded out for the benefit of mankind. So you, Muslim, Muslima, hold the responsibility and the burden of being those of which should be leading, leading the way for the benefit of those who are lost. 
Some of us in this very room are lost. Some of us in this very room get lost, find a way, get lost, find a way, come back. Some get lost, never come back. Some come back stronger than they were before they lost their way. A lot, a lot is the judge. We are not the judge. We don't criticize. We do not know the heart of the individual. And plus, we do not know what a lot is placing in that person to do certain things to set an example for us or anyone that sees them. But we do not know. Alhamdulillah. That's serious business. That's serious business because we tend to judge criticize and see somebody doing something and think that that is them. Shaitan may have a hold of their neck. You hear what I'm saying? If Shaitan had a hold of your neck and there was another Muslim, another brother or sister that could get him off you, wouldn't you want them to get him off you? Wouldn't you want them to give you the advice, to give you the dua, the verses of Quran, to get the Shaitan off your neck? You would plead. You would beg them. You would ask Allah for your, his mercy. That someone please help me. People cry out for help in many ways. Many ways people cry out for help. Sometimes people do wrong to get the attention because they want help. And we sit up on our posteriors like we all that. And start judging people and criticizing and saying this and that about this brother and that sister. May Allah, may Allah forever shower, shower us that we may goosle with his mercy. You hear what I'm saying? We, we should pray that. When we take the water and make gusul and wudu, that Allah's mercy is in every single drop of that water. And when we realize it, and when we feel our heart and our minds becoming cleansed in that wudu or that gusul, it should maybe bring tears to your eyes, at least to your heart. And men don't think you too much of a man to cry. If a human being has tears, man, male or female, then that's what they're there for, is to cry. Scientists, doctors will tell you that in the tears are chemicals that relieve certain things in your very essence. You hear what I'm saying? In your very essence. Don't be ashamed to cry. I'm not saying walk down the street, come to Juma, bawling and, and all that. That's not what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I confess. I confess. 2 o'clock, 3 a.m. in the morning, I'm up doing do wads making this a lot. I break down and cry. Because I know where I come from. I know where I was. I know the things that I did. And now I give all thanks and praise to Allah for giving his mercy to bring me out of that madness. Y'all too. It's madness, man. And this, this here, this here is the only cure for that. I just want to, I just want to reiterate that ayah. So because of the mercy from Allah, you were gentle for them. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you had been rude, and I'm giving you some of the extended. If you had been rude, impolite, harsh, at the heart of them, their response would have been to turn away from you. They would have reached the end and left from around you. They may have transformed or transitioned onto something else. This is what Allah says is allowed, would have been allowed, allowed to the believers 
if the messenger of Allah would have been harsh on them for not having his back. You know what I'm saying? And if we was out in a war and we had some homies that's supposed to have our back and they out there half-stepping and jiving and harm came to us, man, we would turn around and look at them and, and stole them with words from the hood that ain't nobody ever heard before in a way that never had been given before. And believe me, and they would understand every single word, every emotion coming from it. Then pardon from them, and you seek for them or from them advice. Hmm? Huh? Consult them, sure, and they with you in matters of importance. Consult them, sure. Shawirahum. Consultation with them. Shawirahum. With them in matters of importance, matters of grave importance concerning the religion and the Ummah. This is commanded. Shura. This is a command from Allah. The word shawirhum, this form of the verb, is in its command form. Fil amri, fitnun amri. It's in the command form. The very word shawirhum is in the command form of the action. And then it is followed by. Uh, Amr, command. So twice, in the word itself and in the description of what is from the word is command. And in that surah 4238, Amruhum Shura Then within yourself, you have decided or resolved or come to a, resolu a resolution, mm -hmm, reflect upon Allah. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Continue on with the confidence knowing that your Lord is Rabbil Alameen. In my conclusion, brothers and sisters, I say to you, as Allah has said to us in the Quran and to Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not my words, my lips, my thoughts from the Quran. Allah says that we must be kind to one another. We must, not, we must not be harsh and impolite and disrespectful of one another. Sure, we weep sometimes. Sure, we have weaknesses and shortcomings and it happens. But Allah says and then ask for forgiveness. Pardon them, O Prophet. And ask for them. For Prophet, ask for them forgiveness. Astaghfiruhum. And continue with confidence that you trust in Allah. We have within the rights of the believers in this religion of Al Islam, Deen Al Islam, Al Islam, the fitra, the nature of the human being, the nature of creation itself has the right to make decisions and consult and ask and reject or accept. When something is not right and you see that it is not right and you let it continue, then you are just as guilty as the wrong. For young ones, younger than yourself, your children, and you understand that something is not right and you let it continue and they see it, they might call you on it. Or they might be influenced by the wrong. And who holds that responsibility? The adult that has the authority over them. So this is not a game that we're in, brothers and sisters. This is not no game. This is not no game. This is not, this is not for those who come from Christianity going to church on Sunday and celebrating Christmas. It's not what that's about. This is a lifestyle. 
This is a everyday, 24-7 lifestyle that the one who created you told you how to live it. If you choose not to live it according to this, to the best of your understanding and ability, if you choose not to live it according to the Quran and the life example of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then you are held accountable on the day of judgment. Not only on the day of judgment, in your everyday life. You wonder why things are going crazy in your life? Because you're going crazy in yourself. You're going crazy in your thinking, crazy in your decisions. And what other ever crazy adjective you can give it? You have the right to correct the wrong. Kuntun kaira ummatin ukrijat lanasi takmuruna bil marufi. That's Quran. And the Quran says that you command what is right and forbid that which is wrong. May Allah humble us. May Allah forgive us our sins and our shortcomings and grant us guidance and understanding of the Quran. Rabbana la tuzik kalubana ba'da id hadaytana wa habdana miladunka rahmatan innaka antawahab ikamata salah.